jumped in, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware. So welcome to Power Your Job Search with Google Tools. Um, again, as mentioned, this is the first webinar of the academic calendar. Uh, my name is Jose Pelayo. I am the Program Manager of Workforce Development here at LAEDC. Uh, Mariana, if you can move to the next slide. Um, we are a team of four. Uh, we are led by Jermaine Hampton, who is the Director of Workforce Development. Uh, as you can see, my colleague, Mariana Hernandez, who is the Assistant Program Manager, as well as Erwin Silva, who is on the uh, call as well. He is a Regional Manager. So our team, um, is tasked in providing uh, time pipelines throughout the LA region. So we focus specifically for with the 19 community colleges. Um, Israel, if you can push to the next slide, please, or Mariana. Um, so what do we do? Again, we are focused in working with the 19 community colleges and continuous engagement with high growth employers uh, with middle skill occupations. So we do that by different things. Uh, we do that by providing um, labor market information, all of the work that we use LAADC, uh, it is backed up by data. Uh, we also provide industry councils as well as regional program advisories uh, where we bring in high growth employers and introduce them to faculty and deans in hopes to see what's missing uh, in regards to skills gaps as well as curriculum. Um, and one of the things that we bring to you directly students is work-based learning opportunities, career awareness workshops, um, and different uh, options that are going to allow you to continue your sustainable wages. Uh, so today, again, we are going to be um, hosted by Google. Uh, the webinar is Power Your Job Search with Google Tools, and I am going to pass it along uh, to Israel so he can get us started. Excellent. Thank you, Jose, for, for the introduction. I hope everyone is uh, keeping cool. Um, I see that the majority of you are in Southern California where it's blazing hot. Um, so hope everyone's keeping cool. I do appreciate you taking the time to join us this afternoon. I'm very excited to be kicking off this webinar series with our first webinar titled Power Your Job Search with Google Tools, hosted by the Grow with Google program. If you are, um, or for those of you that are not familiar with the Grow with Google program, I'd like to just take a few seconds to share more about the program, which is an initiative by Google to help not only entrepreneurs, but individuals like yourselves to grow your skills, um, to leverage their tools to improve your job search, which is what we're gonna be covering today. And we also offer webinars geared towards uh, small businesses or entrepreneurs who wanna grow their digital presence. So today's webinar is an example of the type of training that this program offers. If you're interested in learning more about the program, you can go to google.com forward slash grow to access more information. Um, so for today's webinar, I'm gonna show you how the various Google tools or the tools that Google offers can make your job search easier and more efficient, okay? We want this webinar to be as helpful as possible. So I'm gonna invite you to utilize the chat feature to enter your questions, provide feedback. There may be something that I shared today that you already know and possibly you know, can add some additional tips. We are definitely open to that. We are now a group of 21 participants. So it's gonna be a great opportunity for us to all get to know one another. I see that there's um, some students that are all from the same campus. So continue to share in the chat the college you're representing in a minute um, and throughout the presentation, I am going to be asking questions. So I, I do want to make sure you are able to locate the chat feature because I will be referencing the chat feature for some of your feedback. OK, so with that, uh, once again, my name is um, Israel Serna. I'm actually joining you virtually from Century City. I'm based in L.A. Um, and it's a true pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. Um, I'm one of 12 Grow With Google trainers that offer these trainings, and I do them in both English and in Spanish. If you're interested in staying in touch with me after the webinar or have questions, my contact information is, is on your screen. Uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, so if you are looking to build your network, in fact, I would encourage all of you to drop your LinkedIn um, 
uh, profiles in the chat so we can network with one another. Um, like I was mentioning, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. I often share articles related to digital marketing best practices, but I also like to share job opportunities that I come across within my network. So if you're interested in staying in touch with me and building your network on LinkedIn, feel free to reach out to me. And also feel free to drop your, your LinkedIn profile in the chat so that way we can network with one another, okay? So with that in mind, I do wanna just quickly, you know, thank Jose and the team, uh, uh, Mariana, Erwin, um, Jermaine for their partnership um, and for producing today's webinar, uh, but most importantly for um, their partnership with the Grow with Google program. As I mentioned briefly in the beginning, this is a two-part webinar series. Um, the webinar you're attending today is the one of two. I am gonna be coming back towards the end of the month to offer the second webinar, which is all about resumes um, and best practices and strategies for producing an effective resume. So if you need help, feedback, or wanna just learn uh, about resumes, I encourage you to sign up for that webinar, which I believe Mariana is gonna drop the link now for you to be able to register, okay? So again, two-part webinar series. Today is one of Okay, um, if somebody's on mute, if you could just mute yourselves as you join, that would be awesome. Okay, so before we continue, um, I think it's a really good opportunity and I like to always kind of pause before I go any deeper into these tools that I'm gonna talk about to really um, acknowledge the state of the job seeking um, uh, you know, um, area that we're in and, and mention that you know, we, the way that we look for jobs and the way that we apply for jobs has drastically changed in the last couple of years. So I think it's important and, and fair to mention some of the obstacles that you may be facing and that we are facing as we go out and look for jobs, okay? So for one, um, you know, during the pandemic and even now as some of you continue with remote studies is that we are or we have fewer access to word of mouth opportunities. Um, it may have been that in the past you could go into the job center at your campus and look for job opportunities there. And we may not have that. Um, as uh, much available, right, these days. Um, Jose, I know you're, you guys are doing a great job in getting more job opportunities out there. So, you know, they are a great resource. But we're also facing a lot of distractions. A lot of us are still working from home. A lot of us are still doing remote studies. So there's distractions, right, from your personal life. Um, and then also just being able to apply for jobs remotely. Some of us may not have the luxury to be able to have access to a computer um, you know, as frequently as others. And so the remote aspect can also be a challenge. So I bring this all up because I think it is fair and I think it is important for us to address those things. And if you're feeling um, you know, like there's a lot of obstacles, you know, there are, <laughs> and I wanna make sure that I acknowledge those. In addition, you know, I want to just kind of share some additional tips on what helped me in my job search and what has helped others in their job search is um, this idea of, you know, it can quickly become a full time job to look for a job, ironically, right? There's a lot that goes into it um, emotionally, right? There's a lot that goes into applying for a job and being discouraged when you get the, you know, rejection letter. Um, but I think it's important for you to, you know, keep a routine. Um, I, for example, when I was in the hiring process, um, specifically, I was looking for work in the middle of the pandemic. Um, one of the things that I did for myself is to make sure that I held uh, a routine. So for me, it was Saturday mornings when I would search for jobs and when I would apply for jobs. And I would sort of reserve those two, three hours early mornings on Saturday to do all of the work. You may come up with your own routine, but I think it is important for you to remember to take breaks, you know, to remember, and, and, and I'm here to acknowledge that it is an exhausting thing for, for some. And so take your time, don't feel discouraged. A lot of what I'm gonna cover and share with you today are some tools to help you keep organized 
and maybe not feel as overwhelmed with the process, okay? So here's a look at the agenda. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to um, share with you how to manage and keep a spreadsheet to help you stay organized as you apply for the different jobs or job opportunities that you're considering. So I think it's important to first and foremost, stay organized. So I'll show you some, some tools that Google offers to help you do that. And then I'm gonna show you how to search and filter for jobs through Google search. I'm also gonna show you how to save jobs and how to get alerts from Google anytime a new job opportunity um, is posted. So that way you can start to get alerts on, on jobs. We're gonna also spend some time on how to create a resume and how to take advantage of some of the templates that Google offers to either update your current resume or create your resume from scratch, okay? And then lastly, one of the things that we're gonna talk about is um, your interviews and specifically preparing yourself for any remote interviews or um, videos, video conferencing um, interviews. This is something that uh, I feel is going to stick around and we're seeing stick around even after the pandemic. So I think it's important for us to look at some of the tools or how to prepare for these video interviews as they become available for you, okay? So again, first we're gonna talk about um, how to keep yourself organized. And I'm gonna specifically talk about one of the tools that Google offers, which is Google Sheets to help you stay organized. Now, um, I like to kind of mix it up with this presentation. I'm going to spend a few time on slides and then I'm actually going to go straight to the actual tool and do a live demo. That way we keep it interesting and it's not just a bunch of slides that I'm sharing with you this afternoon. Uh, one thing to note, and you may already know this if you are a Google user, is that to access any of the tools that I'm going to be talking about today, you will need a Google account. Um, I will mention that sometimes people can get confused when I say Google account. I'm not specifically referring to a Gmail account, which Gmail is one of the tools that Google offers. What I'm referencing is a Google account that's actually gonna give you access to all of the applications and tools that Google offers. Um, so first and foremost, make sure we have a Google account. The second thing that I'm gonna point out because I find that this is something that was helpful for me during my job um, search process is taking advantage of the Google Drive. And this was particularly helpful for me because I'm in a um, uh, profession that requires for me to showcase videos of me um, talking, videos of me um, leading a workshop, also sharing um, with potential lawyers on the site. So I found Google Drive a very easy and helpful way to share some of my portfolio with my potential employers. So the Google Drive is a great place for you to house all of that information. I am noticing that there's a delay on my video. So um, Jose, am I still good? Okay, because I do see a little bit of a delay on my screen. Yeah, you had a little delay, but now you're you're good now. I'm good. All right. Awesome. So again, we're going to focus today on Google Sheets. I'm going to just quickly show you how you access Google Sheets, and then we're actually going to go live into the demo. Okay. So I personally love Google Sheets, not just for work purposes, but I also use Google Sheets for my personal life. Um, for example, I'm getting ready to um, do another trip to Mexico City. When I travel, food is my compass. So I have an Excel sheet with all of my restaurant reservations, um, all of the reservations to museums. So I like to keep it all organized and keep track of you know, where I'm gonna be eating. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I do, <laughs> okay? Um, so similarly, you, know, you could use a Google sheet to help yourself keep organized as you start to apply or as you start to identify job opportunities that you're interested in, okay? So on your screen, I'm sharing with you sort of an example 
of what this Google Sheet could look like. In a minute, we're gonna go in and customize it a little bit. I'd actually love to hear from you on some of the things that you track, perhaps when you're looking for jobs. So let's go ahead and just go straight into the demo. That way I can show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna reshare my screen, okay? So you should be seeing my Google um, page, okay? So again, if you're not familiar, if you click here on this icon, it's gonna give you access to all of the tools and applications that Google offers, okay? Again, today we're gonna to be focused on Google Sheets. We would then click on Google Sheets. What you're gonna find is when you open up Google Sheets, there is um, Google offers templates for a bunch of different tasks. Today, we're just gonna start with a blank, um, with a blank uh, Excel sheet, okay? Or Google sheet, I should say, okay? So let me go into this one because I already have it formatted for us. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm applying for jobs is to keep track of the ones that I'm interested in and the ones that I've applied for, okay? So here you can customize this as, as you like, add the different colorings or coatings that you'd like. But in general, here are the basic things that I like to cover, okay? Now, in a minute, I'm gonna ask you, what are some of the things that you look for or you like to track when you are applying for a job? So that way we can start to populate this Excel, um, this Google Sheets and show you just all of the things that you can capture and monitor as you uh, begin your job search. So here, I like to keep status. So for example, have I, you know, applied? You know, am I waiting for interview? Right? So this is where I like to keep track of that. The company name, the position that I'm applying for or the title, the location, the hour salary, and for me personally, benefits are a key thing. So do they offer benefits, okay? Now, with location, you know, some of you may be interested in remote work. So you may want to track remote work, okay? Uh, I'm curious, actually, if you can let me know in the chat, what are some of the other things that you would find interesting or important to track? Um, again, with the notes sections, I usually like to keep any notes from like from the job interview or for example, if I'm doing research on the company, which I really recommend that you guys do, maybe that's where I include a little background on what I know about the company. Um, but is there something, um, you know, maybe Jose, I, I know you're very well versed in this space. Is there something that you recommend to your students? Yeah, one of the things that I would recommend is the date you apply to keep track. Um, you definitely don't wanna have an employer reach out and you forget when you applied or who the employer is. Uh, but one of the things that I, I, I want to emphasize is that this is free for you guys as a resource to utilize. Um, and anywhere you go, no matter what industry or occupation, you're most likely going to be utilizing these type of forms. So it's a great resource to have and to utilize. Just want to add that, Israel. Yeah, I love that. So a couple of recommendations came in. One of them that I just re remembered was the, um, the application URL. And I bring this up because, as you know, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but like with LinkedIn and Glassdoor and all of these other platforms, they actually kind of make it a lot easier now to apply. And it could be, you could easily forget where you apply or how you apply, right? So I actually like to um, keep track of the URL. Um, somebody on the, in the chat, um, uh, let's see here, uh, Daniel said, follow up, right? Are there any follow up action items? Who's the contact? I love the I love the idea of the contact because um, POC, okay, so person of contact. I love that, Daniel. So these are all things because, like I said, with some of these platforms that are making it a lot easier to apply, um, you know, it is hard to keep track. Uh, Joan said application deadline. I love that uh, because applications can come and go, right? Postings can be up one day and then out the other and you realize like, oh, the cutoff was yesterday. So I do love that, Joan. 
Um, Joan also said, any application docs that are needed, contact information, dates, I love that. Tina, once again, said application deadline, I love that. Website link, Joan, you beat me to it. Exactly, website link. Uh, references or letter of recommendation in case they are needed, right? Um, so that's a good one, references needed. So you can just say yes or no. And that this could also be a prompt for you as you're applying to remember to ask particular questions. Um, I love this. Um, Anne-Marie said, is it a full-time or part-time position? Uh, so we could just say, um, what could that be, uh, full-time? Yeah, because there may be some of you who are only looking for part-time work and that's a priority. So I love that. That's a great recommendation. Um, application status, we talked about that. Thank you, Joan. So good. So you kind of get the picture, right? And the whole idea behind this, I found is during the process is, is uh, particularly because sometimes you may get referrals from friends who say, hey, I, I, I saw this job opportunity and I thought about you. It's great for us to take that link and drop it in, even if you're not ready to apply then, because that's the other thing too, right? You may first do a search for all the jobs that you're interested in and then apply for them later. So you could use this document the same way to fill in the jobs that you're interested in applying and then start to fill in whether you apply to them or not, okay? Uh, one other thing you're gonna notice down here, there's a second tab that I created. And this is where I keep track of all of my profiles. So for example, I may have a profile on Glassdoor, I may have a profile on ZipRecruiter. So I like to keep track of my username and passwords here because I do forget. <laughs> I do forget all the places where I have a present or where, where I've applied. So this could be in many ways, like your, your place where you come to on your Saturday morning and you update it or you populate as you go, depending on how you like to work, okay? Any questions, additional feedback on this, on this, um, on this tool that we just discussed? It was all great feedback, by the way. Everyone who participated, I, I appreciate um, your, your commentary. Okay, so if no other questions, um, I do see that my video is on delay. So Jose, do you think I should go off camera just to help? On our end, um, I think you're fine on our end. Uh, it's up okay. to you though. If you feel it's, it's beneficial, then you're a call. Um, Tommy just asked, is there like a number of columns for numbers? You know, it's going to be up to you, Tommy, like how much you want to um, capture. It's good. Ultimately, it is your um, Google Sheets. So whatever you feel comfortable tracking is, is really going to be up to you. Um, okay, so let's move on to the second section, which is all around finding opportunities on Google search. Okay. Now, a lot of us are familiar with doing searches on Google. Not, I find that a lot of people don't know about this capability to search for jobs on Google directly. So I'm gonna quickly walk you through it before we go into a live demo. But through Google search, you're gonna have the capability to be able to search for jobs using a variety of keywords, okay? The most generic way you can look for a job is to type in jobs near me. Okay, I find that that's actually too generic because you're just gonna get a bunch of jobs, okay? Unless you are open to a bunch of different jobs. Now, if you're looking for something very specific, this is where keywords are gonna be very important, okay? So some of you may be interested in jobs in a particular area or city, right? Um, I see that Sharon is unmuted. If I can have you Sharon, mute yourself. Um, so you may, you may be particular about a city or a region in which you want to apply for or a particular job that you're looking for. So your job searches and your keywords are going to vary depending on what you're looking for. So as you can see, I could technically do a job for digital marketing roles in LA and that's going to, Google's going to know to scan the internet and be able to show me and pull together a list of jobs 
that fit those keywords, okay? So on your screen, you're seeing an example of a search query that is jobs near Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, this is still a little too generic for me. Again, if you are open for different jobs, you may wanna start here with something as generic as jobs near the city that you're in, okay? I'll tell you that in the last two years, we've seen a lot of remote searches for remote jobs. So that may be another keyword that you enter in your search query, okay? Now, the point that I'm trying to make here within the tool is that Google is going to take those keywords or that search query and is going to scan the internet and pull together a list of relevant jobs that meet that criteria. And it's going to display them just like how you're seeing on your screen, okay? Now, within this list, what you're gonna find is that Google's also gonna populate uh, important information about that job. For example, it's gonna show you all of the places in which you can apply for this job, okay? So if I already have a Glassdoor account, I may just apply through Glassdoor because I already have an account with Glassdoor. Okay, but you're seeing that Google's pulling all of the pages where this job is posted and compiling it in one location. In addition, it's going to show you big picture, the salary range, if it's available, the location, whether this job is a permanent role, whether it's a temporary role, and then also important dates like start date or application deadlines. I find that this is very helpful because it's all in one location. Okay. In addition to um, putting together and compiling that list, what you're also going to be able to do is filter jobs with a variety of filters. And we're going we're gonna to see in a minute all of the filters that Google offers, but you can filter by title. Some of you may be looking for a promotion. You're like, I've been a manager for five years. I'm ready for that director role. I'm going to filter for just director roles because I'm ready. Um, so title may be an important thing for you. Location. Um, I think that the date posted is really important. So for example, when I was doing my job search, I only filtered for jobs that were uh, posted within the last month, only because in my mind, I thought if they've been posted for more than a month, they may already be deep into the, um, into the interview process. But who knows? There may be a job that you really like and maybe you do email the recruiter and say, I see that this job was posted a month ago. Um, are you still looking? Is this, the, you know, should I still apply? Because we do find that sometimes they're already deep into the interview process and they're not accepting applications. So I personally filter for jobs that have only been posted the last month, okay? Uh, you can filter by company type and then also by employer, okay? So I grew up in Anaheim, not too far from Disney. I know tons of people whose career, life career goals is to work for Disney. So they're probably gonna filter for jobs that are related to Disney or that work with Disney perhaps. So you can filter by employer, okay? Boeing comes to mind, right? Boeing is a great company. So you may filter jobs that are associated with Boeing, companies that work with Boeing. That's another example of one way in which you may wanna filter. Okay. I'm going to spotlight this work from home because it is one of the more popular things that have come out of the pandemic. And one of the things that we're seeing in, in general from employers is that more employers are open to remote work. So this may be one of the things you're looking for. So you can filter by remote work. Okay. I'm also in a minute, I'm going to show you how you can save a job and save it in your Google profile. I still recommend that you take that URL, the application URL and save it in your um, Google Sheets, but you can still save, you can still find um, a way to save it in your, in your Google account to then go back to it later, okay? All right, so for this next slide demo, I'm gonna actually ask for a volunteer and in the chat, I'm curious to hear from one of you um, a title 
that you're applying for or an industry in which you're trying to break into. So if you can let me know in the chat if there's a particular title that you're interested in for jobs or an industry you're trying to break into, and I'm gonna do a live demo um, with that. Any volunteers? There's no right or wrong answer, by the way. I'm just trying to, I'd like to show how this works. So Daniel, project manager, that's good. Uh, entertainment industry. Um, Daniel, is there within, is there an industry in particular that you wanna break into? So project manager is, is pretty generic, but I'm curious to know if there's like an industry that you're, you're particularly, um, okay. So Tommy said film industry, administrative roles. Let's start with Tommy's. And then if there's, um, I'm still curious to hear from Daniel if there's an industry. If we have time, we can go back and do and do Daniel's. But for right now, since we are in LA, Tommy, let's do film industry. Um, I'm gonna do, let's see, let's see what this does, okay? So again, we're just starting with a general search. And what you're gonna find is this section here, right? That's produced 72 jobs, okay? So let's go ahead and click on that. And then Tommy, you know, particularly because you recommended this, um, you know, we're gonna continue some dialogue on chat. So, so as you can see here, uh, for if this were Tommy's search for, for um, admin jobs, uh, Tommy's gonna have access to this list. And Tommy may, um, you know, start to filter out by um, title, location, the date posted, uh, requirements. That's a good one, right? We want to know: Do we even qualify for for this job, right? So we're seeing that a lot of these jobs either require, don't require a degree. Some of them don't require experience. Um, some do require three under three years of experience. So you can see, you can start to filter. Um, and let's just assume that Tommy's just breaking into the industry. Maybe he doesn't have experience. So if we select no experience, now the system is filtering for those jobs that don't require experience, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, this job in particular, with it, which is a production coordinator for casual films in LA, we're gonna find that the system has pulled the job highlights, a little bit of the description. Um, it's pulling um, the reviews, right? Some, that's important. Sometimes we wanna read, what are some of the current employees? What do they think about the company? I mean, I find that super important. So reviews, it's also pulling reviews. Um, we can see that it's also offering, this is a full-time, no degree, they offer health insurance and dental insurance. So again, if Tommy was like, this fits my criteria, he can then, or they can then save that job to then maybe apply for it later or review it a second time once they've scanned for, for, for jobs. Now, all of this could be a pretty daunting experience if you're having to do this daily. So one of the features that I particularly um, appreciate is that you can, if you see this section down here, if you are okay with like, for example, let's say Tommy has gone in and added all of the filters. He, uh, you know, they have the, the filters set. It's, it's good to go. They can then enable the alert functionality. And what's going to happen is you can let Google know let me know anytime a job that meets these requirements becomes available, alert me via email. And you can set it so that you can get daily updates. I thought it was a little bit, a little bit overwhelming to get daily reminders. So I actually had them compile a weekly reminder. So every week on a Friday, which was so convenient for me because I would, I would work on Saturdays, I would get a list via email of jobs that met this criteria and then I would just filter through, okay? So this job alert is a great way for you to sort of like set it and then just have Google do the work for you, okay? Now, if you find that you have to go back in and add some additional filters or remove filters, you can always cut, go back and customize your, your job search, okay? 
Any questions on this? Um, anybody already know about this functionality? I'm curious if any of you are already using this because um, if you are, great. Uh, I'd love your feedback. Maybe you have some additional tips you can share with the team. Um, if you do, let me know in the chat, okay? So it looks like some of you, some of you have experience, which is great. That makes me feel good that uh, there are some of you that are already using it. Okay, so let's continue with the um, remaining portion of this presentation. Um, we're gonna now talk about um, resumes, okay? And particularly what I'm gonna do is talk to you about Google Docs, which is a tool that Google offers um, that, you know, one of the things that I find that super helpful is that it provides templates. So that way you don't have to start from scratch, okay? So when you access Google Docs, you're gonna find that there are templates for all kinds of scenarios, um, including resumes, okay? So when you go into the system, you have the ability or the opportunity to choose from a variety of templates. So that way you don't have to start your resume from scratch. Now, I find because I have nine nieces and nephews that some, you know, they're very, um, what's the word? A lot of them are very well versed in like Photoshop and, uh, and are very skillful. So sometimes they don't need the help, right? With creating a template. But for those of us that are, you know, uh, need a little bit more help with design, I find that these templates are very useful because they're a template. Everything's already been done for you. And I find that these templates have already the main sections that should be included in a resume. So it takes away some of that guessing work on like, what should I include? Do I need to add this section? What you're gonna find is that these templates already have those sections for you and for you to populate. They're super customizable. So you can go in and change the text. You can change the color. If you, if you don't particularly like the accent colors that the template comes with, you can change the coloring, you can change the font. Uh, when, we, when I come back later in September, I am gonna talk to you about, particularly about font styles and colors that we should stick with, because this isn't just about creating a, a resume with five different colors, five different fonts. So on our second webinar in later in the month, I'm gonna talk to you more in depth about um, what you should include in your resume and what recruiters look for in resumes. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time sharing that because I wanna save some of that for, for that second webinar. But what I do wanna mention is that within these templates, what you're gonna find is that because these documents live in the cloud, it's gonna allow for you to house your resume virtually or in the cloud, okay? In addition, it's gonna allow you to add commentary and also be able to invite people to um, edit or to provide feedback to your resume. Um, I'll tell you that I rely heavily on my friends and family when I'm uh, putting together a resume for, for a job. So I always like to get a second opinion. I always ask for one or two friends to review my resume. So through Google Docs, I can give them permission to add commentary, to make suggested um, edits or, or you know, catch any errors or grammatical errors that I have. So it makes it very easy to um, work with somebody on this. And I, and I say this because I hope that you are seeking help. Resumes are overwhelming, it gets a lot of work, and it is a group effort. It's a team effort, I've always said this. So don't be shy uh, to ask for help identify one or two people that you can trust to provide feedback and you can share your, your resume with them and give them either editing capabilities. You can maybe even just have them view it. There's an option where you could just send your resume for people to view and then maybe they can provide feedback another way. You know, it, it all depends on, on how you like to receive feedback, okay? But it makes it very easy to share um, one thing that I also find, and I'm going to cover this in the second webinar, is I actually like to customize my resumes per um, job uh, descriptions. So I actually find that 
I have multiple versions of my resume because I like to customize them for that particular job that I'm applying for. So one, one feature that I like about this is that I can copy and paste the job description and include it in my notes. And I have that as a reference when I'm writing out the job, the, the, um, the purpose, or when I'm you know, double checking if I have the requirements, I like to reference what I read in the resume. And I usually copy and paste that into this doc so that I have it available and I can just copy and paste, okay? And we're gonna cover a lot of this in the second webinar when it comes to um, the tactic be behind improving your resumes, okay? All right, so um, one thing that I'll add with the Google Sheets is that because I do customize my resumes, I actually do keep a link um, for that resume. So that way I can reference the resume that I sent uh, when I was applying, okay? All right, so for the last section, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the job interview, okay? So one thing to note, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, was that um, remote interviews are a thing now. I feel like they're here to stay. I think a lot of, and I, I'm, I'm assuming there's some HR people in, in, in the chat and maybe they agree with me, but I find that a lot of employers have found how efficient it is to conduct interviews remotely because those individuals don't have to come in. It's less expense to fly them in or less expense to have them drive in. So I'm finding that the majority of the initial interviews are done online and then final interviews in some cases are being conducted in person. And if not, still online. So I think that this is something that we're gonna see stick. I think that, uh, like I said, a lot of companies are realizing how efficient you can be with remote interviews. So I wanna mention that Google offers a tool called Google Meet. You may be familiar with this tool. I find that this tool was helpful for me because it helped me um, prepare for my interview. Now keep in mind, you won't have control over the platform that the employer is gonna to choose to conduct your interview. So I don't want to assume or have you assume that you have to provide the platform for the interview. In most cases, they are gonna tell you and send you the link of where to join for that webinar or for that interview, I should say. But what I think is really important is that Google Meet is an opportunity for you to use it to prepare for that interview. So if you have one or two individuals in your life who can help you prepare for that interview, I think that Google Meet is a great tool for you to use to prepare for that job interview, okay? In addition, I think it's really important to keep these best practices in mind when you are preparing for an interview, okay? One thing that I did, uh, because interviews, can be very tense, right? You're nervous, you forget things, right? So one thing that I did for myself is I put my, I put a little note right above my camera and I put the word smile because I found myself tensing up and I found myself not smiling. And I, I love to smile, but you know, why am I gonna tense up in the most important part of an interview, right? This is where you're gonna be able to showcase who you are. And so I think it's important for you to remind yourself to relax, to smile. The other thing to note, and I say this a lot, is you're gonna find that in some instances, your employer may also be new to this process. So they may be nervous as well because they're not used to conducting interviews online. So they may be nervous as well. So I think it's important to remind yourself to smile, to speak slowly, you heard me talk to Jose throughout this presentation because I was sensing that my camera was a little slow. It's okay for you to pause. We can't control the internet. That's on anybody. Your employer, your future employer can't, you can't. Things happen, right? So I think it's important for you to take your time. We don't know the bandwidth, right? Or how the bandwidth is going. So it's better to just take your time to pay attention to lighting. So for example, right now I'm sitting in front of a window because I wanna make sure that you can see me, right? The one thing that I'm gonna avoid is putting the window behind me because that's only gonna cast a shadow and hide in my face. You wanna make sure that you, you can see yourself. And this is why I think 
a practice run with a friend on Google Meet could be a great way for you to just test the screen, you know, your surroundings, what's behind me. You know, not all of us have the luxury of having a home office. That's okay. It may be your room, but just make sure your bed is made. <laughs> you know, that's all I ask for. You know, you're not going to get judged because you're in your room. You know, some of us don't have the luxury of having a, uh, an, an office and that's okay. So again, these are just some things to keep in mind. Google Meet is a great way for you to be able to, you know, find how you're going to be framed, how your lighting is going to showcase and be able to do like a run through with the family or friends. Okay. Now, some additional tips that I want to share with you. And, and I think these are particularly important because of these virtual interviews is I find that because uh, in some cases, you may not have the opportunity to do the interview in person, you won't have the opportunity to give that firm handshake, right? I remember when I would go to interviews, I always made sure that when I would go to do a handshake, I wanted them to make sure that I was like here, that I was present, and I would give a firm handshake. And that was my way to say, I'm here, I'm present. Thank you for, for allowing me to be here, right? We don't, we won't have that opportunity in some cases. So it's going to be very important for you to bring your energy to the interview. Okay. I highly, highly recommend to um, job seekers this um, point number two, which is mastering your glowing introduction. What I mean by that is you should not be caught off guard when your future employer says, Hey, Israel. Thank you for being here. Why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about you? That question should not be a surprise. And you should be ready with your introduction. It should be something you should know like the back of your hand, okay? You should know this because it's going to be a frequently asked question. Employers are going to start by saying, tell me a little bit about you. Tell me why you're interested in this job opportunity. Tell me what you're bringing to the table. So these questions shouldn't be surprise questions. In fact, you should be prepared to answer these very, very basic questions. And what I find is that when you do practice, you're, you're not caught off guard, right? You can, you can answer the question efficiently and feel good about it, right? Like, I, I, know, I know my story. I know why I apply. You should know that, okay? Um, again, study the motivational questions, like I mentioned. Uh, do your research. Take, you know, 20 minutes. Find out a little bit about the company, go check their stocks, go check their glass door reviews. These are all things that you should do ahead of time and be prepared to maybe answer or ask some questions when you're in the interview about the research that you've done. Okay. Again, the way you choose to show up matters, your energy, you know, we are now living in this real virtual world. Energy is important, lighting is important, and the way that we show up to these interviews is important. All right, so we covered a lot. We're almost to the top of the hour. I wanna be respectful of your time. So I'm just gonna skip real quick to remind you of the second webinar that we're gonna be offering, which is all around resumes. We're gonna review some resumes and uh, you know, uh, provide feedback as if we were um, the job recruiter. So if you are interested in seeing some resume examples, getting feedback, I encourage you to, to sign up. And then if you're interested in building your own digital skills, Google has a ton of courses that you can take for free to help improve your digital skills, whether that's your Google Sheets, whether that's um, digital marketing tools, et cetera. There's a ton of resources that Google offers. All right, Jose, I covered a lot. Feedback, thoughts? <laughs> no, thank you so much, Isra. Appreciate it. It's all great information uh, for everyone here uh, in attendance. Uh, today's world has changed, definitely. Um, so all the information uh, Israel relayed is very accurate. A lot of the employers are now working remotely or have a hybrid situation. A lot of the interviews are being conducted in a platform where it's virtual. So this is essential information, as well as going back to my years as a student, uh, I wasn't aware of Google Sheets and what uh, different you know tools I can utilize. So it's it's very convenient for those who are and you know unable to purchase 
any other form of platform they can utilize to complete their homework, but also do job search. Uh, Mariana has um, dropped in a survey. Uh, if you can take the time to answer it, as well as kind of reiterate what Israel said, we will be doing a follow-up webinar. Uh, and just to inform you students, we will be conducting a job fair uh, with Microsoft uh, late October, early November. Uh, and that job fair is gonna be solely for the 19 community colleges students. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to take advantage of Israel and his expertise and give you feedback on how you can improve your resume. Uh, but if, even if you cannot make it to the job fair, it's always useful to have a resume ready uh, and kind of always kind of be revising it based on where you're applying. Uh, it's not one universal resume that you will utilize and we'll touch base more on that. But again, thank you, Israel. We'll open it up for any Q&A. We have five minutes. Um, again, you have Israel here with his expertise. If you wanna ask any questions, any advice, um, you're more than welcome to unmute. Or if you wanna type it in the chat, you will definitely read it. We do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um... So earlier, Joanne King asked if the templates are ATS friendly. Joanne, if you'd like to chime in, um, that's a question for Israel. Oh yeah, just that um, many organizations now utilize um, application electronic systems, right, to collect their 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 um, their pools, right, applicant pools. And so I just wanted to see if your templates, all of them, are applicant friendly or there's some yeah, that would be the key and that's something we're going to talk about next time because that is something that we do need to consider when we're applying just because of these new software and the way that some employers do accept um resumes so yes to answer your question they are and then sorry i'm going to follow up only because i have you on are the resumes like a generic resume or are they industry specific because they're, they're different generic. industry okay yeah they're generic and i'll i'll share my screen again because i think somebody was uh also asking how um how we got there. So let me just share my screen. Um, so <clears throat> if you open up Google Docs, so again, there's two ways to go about this. One is through um, the application, right? Here on the right-hand side. So you would just check Google Docs, which is gonna give you, take you here. I'm gonna go ahead and select um, blank, just to kind of show you. And then if you go to file, and I know I'm going, um, uh, sorry, hold on, let me go back. Uh, where did it go? Hold on, let me go back. So if you go to Google Docs, uh, where did it go? So it should be here. Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, so, oh, here we go. So if you go to new, okay, so you could go from template gallery, okay? So if you go from template gallery, it's gonna send you to all of the templates. Now, I mentioned that there's a ton of templates for all kinds of purposes, legal, HR, um, you can even create, uh, you know, welcome letters. Uh, I'm focused here on the resume and there's five templates here depending on the format, but when you click on this, to, your, to answer your question, they are generic, and then you just would customize them. So one thing, for example, um, most uh, companies don't require for you to list your address, especially now that it's remote work. So I never include that. If anything, I'll include my city and state at, at max, but never my full address. Um, and so you could just customize as you go here. Okay. Yeah, Israel, and I think that's great that you showed the template because it does guide individuals. Uh, but again, I think you'll touch base more on that on the webinar and get some great feedback from us, expertise, Mariana, myself, Erwin, as well as Israel. So I think the opportunity to attend the next webinar, it's going to be very essential, again, to have that resume. And if you are looking to attend that um, job fair, that's solely for you students uh, in the 19 Community College, it won't be open for anyone else. And that's going to be beneficial as well. Um, I don't know if Mariana has anything to add. I'll kick it off to her or Erwin. Um, and then if there are nothing's there to add, we can kind of end it to respect everyone's time. So Mariana. 
Uh, we did have a couple more questions in the chat. I know, um, as Jose mentioned, we want to respect everyone's time. So even if we weren't able to answer your question, the recording and the slides will be shared. So you will be able to find uh, the answers in the recording or the chat or uh, the slides. There's a question about the job fair, Mariana. The job fair will be in person. I'm trying to answer questions in the chat as well. So sorry, you guys. I'm I'll help you out, Mariana. Um, Joanne, the job fair for Microsoft is in the final stages of being um, organized. Um, it's going to be, um, we're going to be focusing on information technology within different um, industry, when different employers, not only Microsoft, but Microsoft is going to be the one hosting us. Uh, but in the information technology, there's different departments as well, not only um, information technology. There's different uh, areas of expertise, whether it be entry level, but what we focus on again is middle skilled occupations. And the community college have done a great job of providing certificates, uh, career paths that will allow you to enter as a middle skill occupation, which will give you more sustainable wages. I don't have any additional thoughts. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Does anybody else have any last minute thoughts before we end this meeting? No? Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Again, the link for the Zoom recording has been shared so that you guys can join us on the 28th and hear more from Israel. Thank you, Israel, so much for yeah. joining us and for providing such useful information for the community colleges and everyone present. So thank you. Kudos thank you to you. That. You did a wonderful job. Thank you for partnering with us. I appreciate everyone's us. participation, by the way. It's always good when the audience gets engaged. So thank you for, for, for that. That makes me feel good. <laughs> Thank you, Israel, and thank you, everyone else. We will be sharing um, Israel's contact info. He did uh, put his link in LinkedIn in the chat, but um, we will be sharing that as well. So we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. Stay cool.